Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us again for another day of living for his glory lifestyle. Today, I would like to talk to you all about what it means to be a child of God. How do you even become a child of God? I know here in the States, in the West, also I've heard this a lot in a number of other African and Asian nations, that we are all children of God, and that is not scriptural. Um, the Bible actually says you're either a child of God or a child of the devil. Now, a number of you may be surprised to hear that, um, and I have a dear mentor pastor who would say you're surprised to hear that because you're not reading your Bible. So let's read the Bible. The scriptures, if you go to John, uh, Genesis 3, 14 and you read verse 14, it starts out with saying, so the Lord God said to the serpent, obviously this is after the fall of Adam and Eve disobeying God's directive, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock. Funny enough, I'm staying not too far from a livestock school. And never even knew that was livestock school. But anyway, cursed above all livestock and every beast of the field. It also says, on your belly will you go and dust you will eat all the days of your life. Verse 15. Now, most of the time people will stop or ignore verse 15. But first, verse 15 says, and I, this is God saying, I will put enmity meaning there will be contention, there will be um, fighting, there will be issues, enmity between you and the woman. So he's talking to the serpent, right? Between you and the woman and between your seed. He's talking to the serpent as it relates to the serpent having a seed. The seed represents children, okay? We're gonna get to the New Testament for those who are, who are already thinking this is Old Testament and it's, it's irrelevant, but it is relevant because we are to adhere to the whole counsel of God. That's through Genesis, through Revelation. But again, let me finish reading. Verse 15, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He will crush your head. Thank you, Jesus. Right? The children of God, the woman's seed, which we're, it's referring to Jesus, but we'll get to that in another video, will crush the head of the serpent and the serpent's children. That's what it says. And you will strike his heel, which is the children of God, Jesus, heel. But we already know that scripture says that the enemy is under our feet. Whose feet? The children of God's feet. So the reason why I'm starting out with the first time there's a mention of the children of the serpent, the children of the devil, is because since returning back to the States, again, I'm in a lot of meetings at different churches, at different events, and everyone is, yay, we're all God's children. But you don't say hello to the person sitting next to you. You don't help the person who came in with three children, maybe even a single mom or even a single dad coming in with three children. It has been raining outside. And if you're seeing the flashing outside, it's thundering here. But you don't even think to help them. You don't even think to make room for them because you want that chair at the end or in the center of the center or the aisle that you're in, right? We'll, we'll, get, we'll deal with that in a minute. So let's go to John 1 and we're going to do a lot of reading of scripture. But like I said in the first video that I'm going to mention scripture, I'm going to state what the scripture is, but then you need to go open up your Bible, maybe a leather, a full leather Bible or on your phone and read scripture for yourself so you can see what scripture is actually saying versus what you believe the scripture said or what you heard someone else say about what God is saying, how his children are to live because he can't live for his glory if we're not in him and if his glory is not in us. Right, but we'll get to that. So John 1, everyone knows one of my favorite books, Genesis to Revelation are all, all my favorite books. But if I had two to choose, John and Ephesians. So John 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God, right? He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and without him, nothing was made that was made. Another video, we can preach just... John 1 to 3, right? In him was life and the life was the light of man. Now, it's not the light, meaning Jesus Christ giving those who are born again him who is light. Again, that's a different teaching because I know a lot 
or new and still know a lot of new agers, people into witchcraft and the new age movement who can see auras, who can see light. They can see light because everyone who was made was made in the image of God and made through Christ Jesus. But that doesn't mean that they are born again and belong to Jesus Christ until they repent, turn from their wicked ways and receive Jesus Christ. Not have a mental assent to Jesus Christ, not believe your mother, your father, your grandmother, the pastor that Jesus is real, but you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Verse five, and the light shines in the darkness. You were darkness. Scripture says that we were in darkness and we are darkness or we were darkness. Again, that's in Ephesians. We'll get to that in another video. And the darkness did not comprehend it. Verse six, there was a man sent from God. His name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. Okay, verse eight, he was not that light, capital L, that light, which is referring to Jesus but was sent to bear witness to that light. Meaning he bore witness. To witness means you actually saw and engaged something. So in order to witness something as it relates to scripture, you actually saw it. You came into contact with it, right? And we all know about how, well, if you're not saved or haven't read your Bible or proclaimed to be saved and haven't read the scriptures as it relates to Mary and Elizabeth meeting each other. But again, you have to do your own reading. Verse eight, he was not the light, but was sent to bear witness to that light. Verse nine, that was the true light, which means there is a false light, but we'll get to that in a minute, which gives light to every man coming into the world, right? So the Bible talks about a false Christ, right? It doesn't, not antichrist, it's a difference. There is antichrist, right? Anyone against Christ is an antichrist. But then there is a false light. There's a false Christ. There are people who receive a false Christ, but they don't live like the Christ that are in scripture. But we'll get to that again at a later date. 10, he was in the world and the world was made through him and the world did not know him. So if you read verses one through three, where it says everything that was created was created through Christ Jesus. It says again, it's repeating. He was made in the world and the world was made through him and the world did not know him. Verse 11, 12, and 13, we're going back to children of God and children of the devil and how to become a child of God. Verse 11, he came to his own and his own did not receive him. Who was his own? Those that were chosen by God, God's chosen people, the Israelites, right? But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. It says to those who received him, you cannot receive Jesus Christ unless you have encountered Jesus Christ. How do you encounter Jesus Christ? There's multiple ways. Number one, the scripture says, how does one believe unless there is someone who is sent, which is an apostle. Again, we'll talk about that later, which is called the sent ones to actually proclaim that Jesus Christ is God. Also the son of God. How can you receive him? You have an encounter with him. You have a supernatural, anytime you encounter Jesus Christ, it's a supernatural encounter with the one who created you in order for you to realize that you are in darkness. The only way you can come out of darkness and no longer be darkness is to receive the one who is light, who is the only risen, resurrected God himself, Jesus Christ. It says again, verse 12, but as many has, as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believed in his name. When you believe, you receive. You can believe and not receive because the devil believes, demons believe. Yes, scripture says demons believe. The devil believes, but they did not receive. They can't receive. Jesus Christ. There are people who've had an encounter with Jesus Christ and they have said, yes, I encountered Jesus Christ, but I didn't want him. I, I, I don't even understand that because when I encountered Jesus Christ, I knew that I had a choice. He didn't make me choose him. I knew he was real, but I also knew the devil was real at the same time. And again, for this, because I don't want this to be very long. I'll give my testimony later. But you need to encounter Jesus Christ and receive him. 
13, who were born not of blood. So all four, I mostly have heard this in Asian nations, mostly in Korea. I was born again when I was in my mother's womb. No, no, you are not born again when you're in your mother's womb. Okay, also in other countries where they say, okay, because my parents are Christians and that makes me a Christian. No, it says you have to believe and receive Jesus Christ. How do you believe him and then receive him? The Bible says the Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin. The Holy Spirit convicts those who are not in Christ of sin, letting them know that there is a savior that they're in need of because they are evil and wicked and practice lawlessness. That lawlessness means you do things in your own way, how you want to think, what you want to do, what you want other people to do, which is witchcraft, but we'll get into that again. And I know I keep saying that, We'll get into it in later videos, but you need to understand when you receive Jesus Christ, you receive him as a savior. He saved you from what? Not just hell. He saved you from the wrath of God. Most people talk about, yes, when Jesus Christ saved me, he saved me from going to hell. Yes, he did. And a lot of times people preach, come to Jesus so you don't go to hell. But that's not the whole gospel. The gospel, the good news is that because of Adam's sin, all every single person who is born, yes, even that little cute little baby that you might be holding or nursing right now, that child that's four, five, six years old that you love and is so cute, right? They need to receive Jesus Christ. Because then you, they are born again, born and of incorruptible seed, not of blood, right? Not of blood from humans, but the blood of Jesus, blood and water from the one who was resurrected. Guys, get this because I'm meeting so many people where they're like, yes, I'm a child of God. And then they curse someone out. And then I hear people laugh saying, oh, you had, you know, five hours of worship in an amazing worship service, but you're actually hiding in church. And when I say hiding, let me explain. If you are in five hours of worship in a church service, but then you step out the door and you curse the person out in your heart or even out loud when you're in the parking lot, well, who were you worshiping? You were not worshiping the Jesus Christ of this Bible who says, what better friend than the one who lays down their life for someone else? When Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, for me, for some of you who are watching, for all of you actually who are watching, some of you receive them, we are, we're supposed to do the same thing. But if you're in a church service and you're running up to have somebody lay hands on you, or you're running up and you're speaking in tongues and, and you're feeling the Lord, but you're at it, you're nasty, you curse people out, you, you're not nice, you don't say hello, you don't, you don't speak to people. Friends, you're not saved. You are not saved. You are not saved because your behavior is not like Christ. You can run up and people can lay hands on you all you want. And you can feel the goosebumps. By the way, because I got saved when I was 32, you get goosebumps when you have an orgasm. You get goosebumps when you hear an opera singer. You get goosebumps from anointed worship. But that doesn't mean that you are born again, living submitted to Jesus Christ. Please, the Bible says that we are to work out our soul salvation with fear and trembling. And that fear is making sure that we have submitted consistently, constantly until we leave this earth to the lordship of Jesus Christ in all that we do because when we are his children the more we grow in him the more we grow in knowing who he is our behavior is like his it doesn't take 20 years to be nice when you said you got saved 20 years ago and it grieves me, it grieves me to see so many people in worship services, in church, outside, in fields and all. Everybody's raising their hands and they're speaking in tongues and they're weeping. And then you're nasty to the person right next to you. You don't think to help them. You don't even think to say hello to them. How, what is that? What is that? 
That is a self-centered, self-righteous, give me God all that you have for me. But yet you are not acknowledging the body that is sitting right next to you. And that is not okay. That is not okay. The rest of the verse, verse 15, who were born not of blood. And then it says, nor of the will of the flesh, meaning you yourself, your flesh cannot will yourself into being born again. It cannot will itself into receiving Jesus Christ. You cannot will yourself into saying, yes, yes, I receive Jesus Christ. Because then what's the purpose of the Holy Spirit who says it comes to convict the world of sin? When you become born again, you don't just change morally. You don't just make a decision and stop drinking, stop cursing. I know Buddhists who do that. I know Muslims who do that. I know Hadi Krishnas or even just straight atheists and witches and warlocks who live a high life that they consider holy or we would look at and say it's holy, but it's of their own flesh and their own decisions because they know relationship wise, it's not good to lie. I've met so many people who are not born again, who know nothing about Christ. And they'll say, well, lying is wrong because you reap what you sow. They don't realize that scripture. That's a, that's a law of God, Yahweh, Adonai, Elohim, right? But they already, they know this. Buddhists, they know it. You know, the yin and the yang, the give and the take. You know, if you give, it shall be given back to you, right? They know this, but we who call ourselves Christians, Christians like Christ, right? I'm American because I was born in America. So when people say, okay, you're American, so they expect me to have been born in America or have an American passport, right? If I said I was a lesbian, right? Lesbian, attracted to women, you would expect me to only date women. I'm not even gonna go through all the other craziness that's going on in the world today. I'll get to that in another video. If I'm Brazilian, you will expect, expect me to speak Portuguese and be from Brazil. Why is it when we say we're a Christian, we're not expected to act like God said we're supposed to act, which is like Christ? Why is that? Why can people say they're a Christian and yet lie, cheat, steal, just be based in lust and addicted because they like it to pornography, to lying, to cheating, to a whole lot of sins that God said these individuals will not inherit the kingdom of God. And by the way, if you read Revelations and you go find it, it says cowards will not inherit the kingdom of God. So for those people who say, oh, I received Jesus Christ, but you know, I'm scared to share the gospel. Okay, well, who, which Christ did you receive? Who did you receive when you say, oh, I have this fear? The Bible says God did not give us a spirit of fear, which is a demon that you have received, if you have a spirit of fear, but of what? Love, a sound mind, depending on your version, right? Love, it also says kindness and a sound mind. So if your mind is not sound, who did you receive? Because one of the things we've shared and I've talked to other people in different parts of the world and also Chinese Christians, I've never met a fake, false Chinese, uh, Chinese person from mainland China who said they were a Christian and they were not a Christian because they all are paying a cost. They know they have to pay a cost. Even those that I've met in the Middle East from predominantly Muslim nations, when they give their life to Christ, women who know when they give their life to Christ will either be raped by their family members, killed because they received Jesus Christ and they now are going to profess that Jesus Christ is Lord to their family knowing that they will be raped and killed because of it. But they will say and have said, how can they now have life and watch their family in darkness? And so they were willing to pay the cost for that. But yet here in the United States, and yes, in other countries, but in the United States, you can have all these worship services, thousands of people or hundreds of people, and everybody again is running to lay hands on me, man or woman of God, and yet you don't share the gospel of Jesus Christ with nobody, and nothing in you rises up when you're around someone who's not saved, and it doesn't grieve your heart and mind knowing that this person will spend eternity in hell deceived, now no, thinking that they're okay when this life is, the Bible says, is just a vapor. 
You cannot say you're a child of God. You cannot say that we have the same father. The rest of verse 13, it says, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man. Meaning your grandmama told you you were saved. Your mama told you you were saved. Your father told you you were saved. Your wife who married you knowing you wasn't saved, but believing you will be saved in her dreams, you were saved, but you're not saved. It's calling you saved. No, it says nor of the will of man, but of God. But of God, you have to be born of God and an incorruptible seed which is Jesus Christ, people. The rest of that, to the Jews, this is John 8. To the Jews who believed in him, and I'm reading the whole scripture, that whole thing that I hear in churches where, oh, it takes too long, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, um, just let's just jump down, we ain't doing that. So if you want to scroll through this, scroll through the video, you can do that, but I will not do that. I'm going to read the context, read the scripture, but read the context that the scripture is being presented in. I'm not telling you my context. I'm not telling you some theologian context. We're just going to read the black letters on the white page. And it says in John 8, verse 31, to the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, meaning you hold on to them, right? Hold on to my teaching. You are really my disciples. Notice you are really my disciples, meaning there are other disciples, but they're not really my disciples. But you, if you hold on to the teaching, meaning you are taught and then you act out what you're taught. And how about this? The Bible says in Titus chapter three, and everyone knows I love saying that the Holy Spirit empowers us to live right. So if you have an issue with forgiving, how do you say you have an issue with forgiving when the one who supposedly forgave you, you're the one, I'm the one who put him on the cross and I said he forgave me. I can't forgive somebody else. How does that work? But you have spent years in the church and reading books on how to forgive. Ten steps to learning how to forgive. How to love like Christ. Ten steps on how to love. No, here's one step. Be born again. That's how you forgive. Be born again. And have the forgiveness from the one who forgave you. That's what you give to others. Right? The scripture says that he doesn't forgive you if you don't forgive others. So how can you have unforgiveness and still think you're saved? Oh, I know, because you've been taught that you can still be saved and have unforgiveness to people who gossiped about you. But yet you've done a whole slew of other things that no one else knows about. God knows to people that you've gossiped about, slandered about, cheated on, lied to, doing all these things, which is associated again with witchcraft. But yet you don't want to forgive somebody who took your pen in, in the second grade. Or did something to you that, you know, you think you have a right to feel what you feel. And, and that's just not of God. Verse 31 to continue. If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. 32, then you will know the truth. When do you know the truth? When you hold on to Jesus' teaching, right? So liars don't know the truth. The Bible says the devil is a liar, was a liar, is a liar. And there's no truth in him. So how do you keep calling yourself a Christian, but you keep lying? How is it that you keep calling yourself a Christian and keep believing the lies of the enemy? How does that work? The Holy Spirit isn't saying, eh, 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 those lies, lies, lies. Before I was born again, I was a liar. Let me tell you how I was a liar. I wasn't the one that says, oh, the sun shot, it's sunny outside, even though it's raining, right? No, my thing was, if somebody said, oh, is it, sunny outside i'm like well kinda well no no it's raining so instead of me saying no it's raining because i wanted them to feel good about me which is manipulation of witchcraft i wouldn't say oh it's raining so they can feel like they were wrong i would just say oh kinda that's a liar that's what you guys call you know white lies it, it's lying so you cannot say you have christ and there's no truth in you Okay, it says, if you hold on to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Verse 32, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So help me understand this. How is it that you're born again, a disciple of Christ, continuing to lie, read scripture the way you want to read scripture and read what you want to read in the scripture and still be bound by things for 10, 20, 30 years? Please just answer that question to me, for me. 
we go from glory to glory, right? That is learning who God is, learning who Christ is, not my identity in Christ. No, because that's also a million dollar book sales of my identity, who I am in Christ. Show me that scripture of who I am in Christ. No, the Bible says, seek him, seek me first, seek him in his ways, right? And how he is, who he is, how his kingdom is. What is this identity thing? We represent Christ in the earth realm. That's it. We are to represent Christ. We are Christians, not Beverlyans or Marians or Bettyans. We're Christians, Christians. So we are to find out what he, what his truth is, how he is, who he is, how he is, so we can be who he is in the earth realm. We are made in the image of God. We're not made in the image of our parents. We're not made in an image of our husbands, our wives, our children. We're made in God's image. And if we're made in his image, then we are to reflect who he is in the earth realm to every single person that we come in contact with, specifically when we're sitting in buildings with crosses on them. And the reason I say buildings and cro with crosses, because there are certain buildings with crosses that are not of God. And we know that. Verse 32, again, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. 33, they answered him. And these are the Pharisees and Sadducees, right? We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. They're deceived because we know that they were slaves in Egypt. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, verse 34, verily, verily. Now I see why preachers sweat. I'm sweating. Okay. Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, everyone who sins, is a slave to sin. Now I know some of you will be like, well, you know, I'm in the Lord. So even though I sin, Jesus is make, forever making intercession for me. Wait for it. Read it. I'm reading Jesus. This is what Jesus said. Is a slave to sin. 35. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family. Family. Family of God. God's child. But a son belongs to it forever. How do you become a son? You become born again. You are a child of God. Remember in chapter John 1? Now we're in John 8. God is telling the Pharisees and the Sadducees who believe they are sons of God because they are children of Abraham what it means to be part of God's family, what it means to be a son. It says, now slaves have no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever, right? 36, so if the son sets you free, Who's the son? Jesus Christ sets you free. Who is Jesus Christ? He's the truth. He's the way, the truth, and the life. The Bible. Ah, have you read this book? Isn't this just, a, it's beautiful. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. It's not you will be free, maybe. It's not you're going to be free a little bit. It says you will be free indeed. Free from what? Free from being a slave to sin. A slave to darkness, a slave to evil, a slave to doing everything that's antithetical to who Christ is. 37, I know that you are Abraham's descendants. That's true. They're descendants of Abraham. And then Jesus says, yet you are looking for a way to kill me. You are looking for a way to kill the one who is true. You are looking for a way to kill the one who is the word. Of God, God himself wrapped in flesh. You are looking away for a way to kill him. Because you have no room for my word. I'm reading scripture says you have no room for my word. Why don't you have any room? You don't have any room in your mind or your heart. Why? Because you think you know. You're a son of Abraham. So you know, you know all the scriptures. You know the Tanakh and the Torah. You know all of that. But you have no room for the one who is Christ, which goes back to you can't receive Christ unless you make a decision to say yes to him, believe him and receive him. But you are so filled with who? The devil, because you are his, you are darkness. You don't even receive what the scripture says. And some of you are angry right now because you're not receiving the scripture. You, I, I, I'm just reading the scripture. 38, I am telling you what I've seen in the father's presence and you are doing what you have heard from your father. Again, we're going back to who are the children of God and who's the children of the devil. Abraham is our father, they answered. 
Yeah? Okay, so Jesus is going to come strong. Remember I said I'm from the Bronx, so he's going to bring the noise. If you were Abraham's children, said Jesus, then you would do what Abraham did. So they knew Abraham because they read the scriptures. They know their descendants of Abraham. They have understanding of Abraham, what he did, who he said, what he said he's supposed to do. But they're not doing it. So how about this? Let me just go off to the side. There are people who, pastors, ministers, people in church who are over a flock, right? Can tell you what to do because they have the scriptures, but they don't do what they're telling you to do. So what's crazy is that you can listen to people who will tell you what to do for Christ, but they don't do it themselves. But here's the crazy thing, and Lord, may this not be my portion ever, is that God will use that vessel, because their scripture says that there are some vessels made for special use and some vessels made for destruction, right? Judas was made for destruction. Huh? God made the devil. The devil, everything was created. The devil, God is using him, right? So all of, side note, for all of you who are like, God, use me, God, use me. He used Judas too. So just let's be, let's be, keep it real, right? He says, if you were Abraham's children, said Jesus, then you would do what Abraham did. 40, as it is, you are looking for a way to kill me. A man who has told you, a woman who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did no such things. You are doing the works of your own father. We're not an illegitimate children. They protested. The only father we have is God himself. And then Jesus comes on strong. What does he say? Verse 42, Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. Hold on. So if God, the God that Jesus is referring to, Yahweh, Adonai, Elohim, yes? If he was your father, then you would love Jesus. You would love the word. You would love the truth. You would love him and who he is, right? He says, if God was your father, you would love me for I have come here from God. I have not come on my own, but God sent me. 43, why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I'm saying. You're unable to hear what Jesus is saying. Why? Because he said in the further verses above that you're so full of you that you have no room for him. You're so full of what you think and who you are. You have no room for him. You belong, verse 44, I want you to read it on your own. Make sure you have your Bible out. You belong to your father, the devil. And you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. You read it. It says your father is the devil. So there's only two fathers, the father of God and the father of devil. We all start out with the devil being our father. We all start out with the devil being our father. Because if we didn't start out with the devil being our father, then why would we have to accept Jesus Christ in order for the Holy Spirit to come into us to say, Abba, Father, to call him Father, for us to become children of God? And if we are children of God, then our lives look like Christ. Why? Because Christ was the one in flesh, God wrapped in flesh, in the earth realm who gives us his word as to how we are to be, how we to think and act and behave, how we are to move and have our being in Christ. It says our mind is to be as his mind is. When we're born again, we now receive him. And so he, God himself, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit is in us. And it says we are, the scripture says we are to renew our mind with the reading or washing of the word. And how do, what are we renewing our mind with? We are renewing our mind with the understanding of what happened to us when we became born again, not renew your mind, renew your mind by being taught how to act like a Christian, but you're really not one. That's why you struggle while you're a Christian or call yourself a Christian. That whole thing of, oh, you know, this whole, you know, in the church, you know, Christians are so depressed. How? Okay. Explain that to me. Explain that to, oh, I'm so downhearted and I need encouragement. Explain that to me. Please explain that to me. 
Explain why you need to be encouraged by everybody you meet and you're not encouraging other people. Explain that to me. Why is it that you have to have someone to, you know, give you a word from the Lord when he gave you 66 books, Genesis to Revelation? Explain that to me. How is it that you need someone to give you a word? And I'm not saying there's, please, the Bible says that, Paul says that, I wish that you prophesied, that you all prophesied. Why? So you can talk to each other as God speaks to you and you all are rejoicing in what God is saying to the, to the body through you and through each other. Not just give me a word, lay hands on me, just all these things that is in the body, in churches. And again, people walk out and just not nice or kind to each other. People, you got to stop it and you got to become born again. The reason you are depressed and, and just all these things is multiple reasons. Number one, if you are born again and you feel heaviness, the Bible says, those who are heavy burdened or heavy laden, come to me and I'll give you rest. But do you also know that there are scriptures where Bible and, uh, and God says that if you do not obey me, you will never enter his rest. It says you won't enter his rest. So when people say, I don't know why I've been dealing with this depression and dealing with all these things in his mind, you know, all these things for, you know, so many years and I just need people to, you know, encourage me. Well, number one, you, you, if you're dealing with this for so many years and you keep calling yourself born again and you need people to encourage you, then you're actually operating in witchcraft and you appreciate the fact that everybody's coming to give you attention that's associated with you being discouraged and depressed and, and low and all of that. People, God did not save you to walk defeated, busted, and disgusted. Now, can you have days where you're just saddened by the things that are happening in this world? Yes. That it grieves me, the things that people do in this world to each other. God is taking me over 40 nations. I've seen men and women do horrible things to each other. But I've also seen these men and women who were doing horrible things to children have an encounter with Jesus Christ and give their life, submit their lives to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and then go back to where they came out from and rescue the same people that they were violating. And yet you can sit here in church in the United States and be depressed because someone didn't, what? Give you uh, an encouraging prophetic word or the man or woman of God didn't lay hands on you or just whatever the reasons are. You need to ask yourself, are you his? Are you a child of God? Or have you been deceived thinking you're a child of God, but yet you're really the child of the devil because you are acting like your father? Father, I thank you for everyone who's gone through this video. I thank you that you allowed them to stumble on to this video so they can truly seek you by reading your reading the Bible, reading the word to see if they are serving the Bible, serving the God of the Bible or serving the God that they were told about by someone who did not know God. Guys, when people say God is good, a lot of people say God is good. And I'm like, oh, how is your relationship with the Lord? God is good. But most of the time they don't have a relationship with God because if you're not saying, okay, this is the revelation understanding that I'm getting about who God is. We know God is good. We know he's good. He created the world, everything seen and unseen. He, became, he created time, people. We know that. But what is it? What is your relationship like with the one who you say is your father in relation to other people that you come in contact with, no one should ever meet you and not know that there is a God. If they don't know Jesus Christ and haven't received him, they need to know that there is someone who is longing for them to return to him so they can call him father. But if you can just be the way you are, again, just starting out with just saying hello to people, helping people, just being kind, saying, just smiling at people. You have to ask yourself, are you his? Are you a child of God or are you a child of the devil? Please read these scriptures on your own because I'm not hearing a lot of pastors preach about being a child of the devil. And just to make sure you're clear, when the Bible says that in the church there are wheat and tares growing up together and the tares will be thrown into the, the fire, those are children of the devil. They're not children of God. That, that, and so 
Yes, you need to ask yourself, are you wheat? Are you truly a disciple of Jesus Christ? Are you a Christian? One last, ver one last verse or context chapter. It says, chapter, still chap First John. Let me go back here. Let me go to First John. Let's see. In part of the love. First, uh, chapter eight, still John eight. It says, he who sins is of the devil. We said that for the devil is, has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil, right? That he might destroy the works of the devil, which is sin. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, does not habitually sin, does not make excuses for sin, does not say, okay, well, the devil's making me do it. We'll talk about being delivered and all of that because Christians, can they have demons? Yes, because deliverance is the children's bread and the children are the children of God, which means that when you become born again, yes, your spirit has been renewed. You have a mind understanding to a certain extent that you're now born again and everything is new, but you, you need to get rid of the demonic and the demons that you were sleeping with and attracted to before you were born again, but we'll get through that later. Whoever has been born of God does not sin for his seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Not the way you think love is, the way God says one is to love his brother. Because remember, you can love without God. Scripture says if you love your mother, father, sister, or brother more than me, so you can love without God. But you need to love people with the love of God. You cannot love God without the love that God gives you when you're born again. You can't love him without the love he gives you to love him. We'll talk about that later. And you cannot love people without the love of God that he gave you so you can love other people. Because when you love other people, those individuals will know that God has loved them because he's loving them through you. But if you don't love other people the way God says to love other people, it, it says you're the child of the devil. I, it says it, just read it, read it on your own. Read it on your own. Last verse, the last chapters, um, read, Hebrews 6, uh, read, he, read Hebrews 11 and Hebrews 3. Hebrews 11, 6 says, and without faith, it's impossible to please God. The reason why I'm going to end with this is because when people say, oh, you have shaky faith. Okay, so you ain't pleasing God. Oh, I'm, you know, I'm, not, I'm having trouble believing in God. Oh, believing in, okay, wait, help me understand. So how do you call yourself a Christian, but you having trouble believing in the one you said had you born again? How does that work? Because again, this is what I keep hearing. This is like you're hearing preached. Oh, God understands that you don't have faith and your faith can be shaky sometimes, you know, just like um, Peter walking on water. Okay, but wait, Jesus wasn't in Peter's mortal body when that happened. But when you became born again, Jesus Christ is in your mortal body. So how is it that you don't have faith in the one who's in your mortal body? Help me understand that logically. Right. And before I got saved, these were questions that I would ask the people who proclaimed to be Christians who were in the clubs with me, who were smoking weed and, go, and having orgies. Right. That, oh, you know, I'm, I'm worried that God won't, God won't what? Show up when I need him. Okay, but wait, so you're telling God the time that you want him to do something that you need done. So you pretty much are God above the one you're calling God. But Hebrews, let me go back to Hebrews 11. And without faith, it's impossible to please God because anyone who approaches him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. God is not lost, right? Earnestly seek him. You cannot seek God in his ways without believing that he is who he says he is because if you don't believe that God is who he says he is then you're actually crazy and deceived because you're seeking someone that you don't believe how does that work can someone put in the comments 
before I was saying chat, because again, I'm new to YouTube, right? But put in the comments, how do you seek God and yet not believe who he is? How does that work? Can someone explain that to me? Because if you're seeking God, that means you have to believe that he is, but then you have been led to believe that you cannot, you don't have to have faith in the one you're seeking, then why seek him? This is similar to a lot of people, again, back to Asia, because like I said, I spent over 10 years in Asia. People go to church, and then from church, they go to Buddhist temple, and then from the Buddhist temple, they go to see the shaman, right? And when I ask them, why are you going to the Buddhist temple, and then from the Buddhist temple to the shaman after church, and this is pastors too, or moksanins, right? Is because God didn't move as fast as they needed, so they put the, you know, the whatever it is at the Buddhist temple, and then they go to the shaman, and have the shaman do, which is a witch, do what they need to do. And then if that doesn't work, then they go to their grandparents' graves or their mother or father's grave and put whatever offering on the grave, hoping that their grandparents or parents or great-great whoever, which are demons if they show up, come and give them what it is that they want. How, how does that work? Oh, wait, you think it's just Asia. Let me just, let me talk about West. Okay, so you say you believe God for whatever it is that you're believing him for, but yet you'll go to a psychic or yet you will go and get some other people who ain't saved. You know they're not saved and say, okay, can you join me in prayer and agree, hoping maybe they'll give you what it is that you've been waiting for God for. Let, let's talk about this last. Let's talk about finances, right? Okay, so yes, God says you don't work, you don't eat. And there are certain people that God calls to not work, right? Not work in certain ways. And he provides supernaturally and all of that. But yet you will tell someone, something that you know people who you know who have money and i've watched people do this and hoping that they'll meet your need and because okay first of all it's manipulation but you're believing god so god does never in the scriptures say pray for money right it says seek him first in his ways how he does things and everything will be added onto you but yet you will go to other people to attempt to manipulate them to give you what it is that you're believing god for this is called witchcraft in the west it's called trying to do God's job. And God, by the way, doesn't have a job. Job is just, jo just over broke, J-O-B, just over broke, right? You have to believe God, believe in him, believe who he says he is, receive him obviously, but you cannot say that you are a child of God and you doubt who he is. You doubt his goodness and you doubt his wrath. You, you, we can't keep doing this and we can't keep allowing people around us to have to make these statements about God that are not true because then you're high-fiving the demonic in the spirit realm and you walk away wondering why you, you know, having issues in your mind. Hebrews 3, 7, it says, today if you hear his voice, we're starting in verse 15, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion because if you hear his voice, God does speak to those who don't think God speaks. That's a whole nother video. If, do not harden your hearts, right? You harden your heart. You say no, right? That scripture in Hosea where it says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And I probably have it on my other phone, but it says people perish for a lack of knowledge and no one seems to finish the scripture. It says, because you reject the truth, you reject knowledge, meaning you read it, but you reject it. You hear it, but you reject it. My people perish. God is saying my people, so you guys stay all know I'm still his people. And they perish for a lack of knowledge. Oh, it's because I don't have knowledge. But, uh, keep reading. So it's because you reject knowledge. So how is you, how are you saying, yes, I'm his people? God killed his people. God killed his people. And remember, everyone is made in the image of God. We're all made in the image of God, not animals, not trees. Human beings that have lungs and eyes and ears made in his image to receive him. It says, do not harden your hearts in the rebellion. Fit for who, verse 16, for who's having heard rebelled indeed? Was it not all who came out of Egypt? Who was out of Egypt? Those who he saved, his people led by Moses. Now with whom was he angry for 40 years? Yes, God does have anger. And love. God has love and wrath and mercy and grace and kindness. All of that. Some of you is just like, God is just grace, grace, grace. No, mercy as well. God, don't kill me. God, let me, empower me continuously to live right for you, with you, in you. Verse 17, now with whom was he angry for 40 years? Was it not with those who what? Sinned, whose corpse fell in the wilderness. It doesn't say the devil 
people made their corpse fell in the wilderness. God killed people. People. And this is Hebrews, New Testament, for all of those who say, oh, God doesn't kill people anymore. Because that's Old Testament. Now we're in Christ. Now our sins are on Christ. And Christ is forever making intercession. Please read the whole scriptures, guys. Fell in the wilderness, verse 18. And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest? But to those who did not obey. See, we, so we see that they could not enter in because of what? Unbelief. If you do not believe Christ, you will not have peace. If you do not believe Christ, you will not have rest. I've been in places where they're shooting off bombs and shooting at, you know, we're in, in bulletproof buses. And I'm like, okay, does anybody have any water, some orange juice or whatever? And there are people like, and I'm like, okay, but did God call you to this missions trip? Or did you come here just to take pictures with the orphans? Like what, what's the deal? People, body, body of Christ, those who are in the body. We need to make sure that when we say we are Christian, our lives are that of Christ. And if we have somebody to our left or right who's saying they're Christian, the Bible says, judge those who work amongst you. And we'll get to that false, you know, don't judge me, scriptures. Everyone, please, if you know Christ, then yes, thank you, Jesus. Walk in that knowledge, revelation, and understanding so you can represent Christ and represent him well. But to those who are reclaiming Christ, but yet you, when you read these scriptures that I've pointed out, just read the Bible, period. You have to ask yourself, are you really his? Are you really a child of God or are you a child of the devil? My prayer is that you are a child of God or you become a child of God, that you repent and turn to him. Your mind has changed. Everything about you changes. And then step by step, you grow in the knowledge of God and his ways. And you're reaching those who was lost like you, who was in darkness like you, who was darkness like me, like you, for those who need him. Father, we thank you for this time. Father God, not Father Devil. Father God, Yahweh, Elohim, Adonai, we thank you that you have given us air in our bodies to praise your name, to praise Jesus for all that he is, who he is, how he is. And the fact that we have knowledge, revelation, and understanding that we were lost, we were darkness, we were evil until we encountered you and had knowledge and understanding of you because of the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And you allowed us to come to you because you drew us to you to say yes because today is the day of salvation today is the day today is the day that god created through christ that you can receive jesus christ as your lord savior and king may that be your portion until next time i'll see you and for those who are his continue to live for his glory so that the world can know that there is a god who loves them desires them one who wants to spend eternity with them.